Hi there, welcome to a special recorded edition of IndyCar. Now normally, as you know, I, uh, I live stream my broadcast most of the time, and that is usually okay, but it's been reported to me again uh, that not just my old Facebook channel, but also now my YouTube live streams are also being subject to um, sound interference from outside. Now this is a, a problem which I faced right from the start broadcasting live anywhere actually in the city of Glasgow and it's due to um, interference from the United Kingdom security services you have mobile units <clears throat> just, you know I think they if I remember correctly they have two of these basically there are vans with radio jamming equipment inside of them and they they look for anybody who's broadcasting anything which they think would undermine the union and I guess I fall into this category so it was reported to me by my uh, YouTube editor today that my broadcast yesterday had about 10 minutes of sound interference. Now I did notice it was garbled in places and glitching and this is a symptom of this kind of radio interference. So to get around all of this, I'm recording this edition today and then I'm just going to simply upload it on various uh, platforms including Facebook, YouTube and wherever else I can get it, probably on X as well. So the subject for today, or subjects for today, first of all, the uh, first topic is in fact Grangemouth. Now many of you will know that um, Ineos is planning to close the Grangemouth refinery in central Scotland, but you may not know exactly why this is happening. Now on the face of it, um, the decision is being presented to us as some kind of economical case that somehow the plant isn't making enough money and Ineos wants to shift its, um, its refining expertise elsewhere. That's sort of partly true. The second part is true. They do want to shift their refining uh, capabilities elsewhere, but um, that's not the reason why they're closing Grangemouth. The reason they're closing Grangemouth is they're being encouraged to do so by the United Kingdom government, which is offering a huge sweetener to Ineos um, for a major new development, uh, petrochemical development in the Netherlands. Now, in doing this, they're basically offering a bribe to... Um, to Mr. Ratcliffe, the man who owns Ineos, to shut down Grangemouth in Scotland in exchange for getting this extra funding, these millions of pounds of funding from the UK government to invest elsewhere in, um, in the Netherlands. So really what we're talking about here is not an economic decision because we also know that Grangemouth, in its most recent posting uh, of profits, was looking at over a hundred million pounds a year in profits. I think it was 112 if I remember the figure correctly. So it wasn't running at a loss, it was making money. But what it wasn't doing, and this is what most people in Scotland don't know, is it wasn't refining Scottish oil. Despite the fact that Jim Radcliffe actually purchased a pipeline which runs directly from the North Sea 40s oil field all the way into Grangemouth directly, you might have thought, well, that means they're pumping North Sea oil ashore and it's going through Grangemouth and being refined here in Scotland. But it isn't. It is actually um, oil which has been imported on tankers from other parts of the world which is being refined at Grangemouth. All of Scotland's North Sea oil production is actually piped under the sea to English refineries. It completely bypasses Scotland altogether. And I think this is a sign of the colonial intentions and uh, the usual activities of the United Kingdom's colonial um, operations. The idea of a colony, and Scotland is a colony, is to take over the smaller country and then empty it of its natural resources and then sell them back to the locals at vastly inflated prices. And that's exactly what happens in Scotland. All of the refined petrol, diesel and aviation fuel that we have in Scotland doesn't come from Grangemouth. So closing it despite the fact that we might think this is a major loss for Scotland, that we can't refine our own oil in the future, is actually a bit moot, really, because we can't refine our own oil at the moment anyway, because it's diverted directly to England. So that makes Grangemouth largely redundant in terms of Scottish oil, and, and is simply a refinery for imports, imports of foreign oil. So for Jim Radcliffe to close it down is really not a big deal for him, but it does rob Scotland of an essential um, central piece of infrastructure. So when Scotland does become independent, it doesn't have a refinery. 
but by the same token, it also doesn't have any oil because it's already being siphoned off to England for refining down there, and then we have to buy it all back at a vastly inflated price. So the reason behind the closure of Grangemouth isn't financial, and it isn't even really uh, about the present situation for North Sea oil. It is, in fact, the political move to make sure that Scotland has no indigenous refining ability so that when we do become independent, we have to buy our petrol, our diesel and our aviation fuel directly from English refineries. And that means we can be blackmailed. And it also is massively off-putting for people who would want independence but are now being deterred from voting for it because they think we're not going to have any fuel. So it is a piece of political and economic and infrastructural sabotage with the intention of making Scotland beholden to England if we become, or should I say, when we become independent. So what do we do about it? Do we keep it? Do we mothball it? Well, the United Kingdom has already um, basically seen various pieces of Scottish infrastructure taken back into public ownership by the SNP government. For example, the shipbuilding industry for civilian ships like the ferries has largely been uh, kept in-house. It's been kept at Ferguson Marine and that is the preferred uh, manufacturing option for civilian sh shipping of a certain size. The other thing that the Scottish government had to buy back was Prestwick Airport, which has never really run at a big profit. It's a freight hub. It is meant to be Glasgow's second airport, but it's a little bit too distant. And so the Scottish people own that airport as well. And if we owned an oil refinery that we couldn't use, that would be kind of pointless. And besides which, England is currently emptying out whatever remains of North Sea oil by allowing the oil companies to exploit 100 new fields and to explore, prospect and pump out whatever is left up there and it's being diverted directly to English refineries anyway. So by the time we became independent, it might mostly have been drained away anyway, which leaves the whole point of um, the petrochemicals plant in Grangemouth largely um, academic, because we probably wouldn't have any oil to refine anyway. But it's a massive turn-off for people who want to vote for independence but think we wouldn't have a refinery. So this is the reason why, and this was pointed out to me by an old friend of mine called Chris O'Kane, who saw right through this, right from the beginning, and said, they're going to use this to blackmail Scotland once we're independent because we will not have a refinery capable of refining our own Scottish oil. But it looks as though, although there will be oil left, there may not be that much by the time we make it to independence. So perhaps this is not really relevant anymore. What would be more relevant would be bringing ashore our offshore uh, green energy and bringing that ashore to various points along the eastern and northern seaboard of Scotland so that it can be basically connected into our national grid system. But anyway, digress. Um, the second uh, item on today's programme is actually a date and this date is the 20th of April, 20th of the of this month. And on that day, on the 20th of April, um, Believe in Scotland is planning a major march and rally in what we used to call George Square, but which most of us now term Freedom Square in the city centre of Glasgow. And this is intended to be, uh, I think, the curtain opener really for the campaigning season, if you want to call it that, for Scottish independence. And I see this as being really a big curtain raiser for this because several thousand people will definitely show up regardless of the weather. So make a date in your diary, keep it clear for the 20th of April and watch out for more bulletins from Believe in Scotland on the internet. And um, <clears throat> finally I wanted to just remind you that today is the day that the second of the two car ferries, the ones which the United Kingdom media has determined are really just big white elephants and costing far too much and they're way too late and everybody should just forget about independence because you can't build ferries on time. The second ship is being launched today. The first ship is working perfectly. The Glen Sonnex is charging up and down the River Clyde quite happily with its new liquid natural gas powered engines and it's going great. So the launch of its sister ship, um, which is supposed to be launched today from the yard 
uh, at uh, Port Glasgow from uh, Ferguson's Yard should see the end of this enormous media saga, which has been going on for years now. Uh, and the British media has basically used it as a stick to hit the Scottish government with for the last few years. However, this should draw a line under it. And with both of these ships actually in service, working perfectly, then Ferguson's has a unique new capability, which is to design and build ferries powered by liquefied natural gas. And in doing that, they've got something pretty unique. And if this is applied, as I mentioned yesterday in my programme, to smaller ferries, like the roll-on and roll-off ferries, um, for which there is, or for which there are some new upcoming orders from the Scottish Government, it would be interesting to see if Ferguson's can scale this down for smaller vessels. If they can, then we have another interesting product which only Ferguson's will have to offer. And that is going to attract international customers to Ferguson's yard for exactly this type of technological breakthrough, which allows ferry companies to operate far lower carbon emissions than they currently can, but without having to resort uh, to electric propulsion, at least not at this stage. So there's a lot of good news coming out today. The closure of Grangemouth is a political decision which has been engineered by the United Kingdom government to disable Scotland's uh, ability to produce its own fossil fuels in the future. The question is whether or not that will be terribly effective in putting people off independence. Well, it remains to be seen, but it certainly looks that, that way. It looks bad for independence if we can't refine our own fuel. So what we do with that plant after Ineos leaves it is anybody's guess. It could be bought up and kept in mothballs for later on, I guess. And that pipeline which runs to the 40s field, well, we could invest in further branches of that going further north up towards Shetland to actually pipe any remaining oil which we still have left after independence to our own refinery. And then we have... Um, We've got the launch of the ship, and we've got this major event on the 20th of April. So there's a lot of good news around in the second part of this bulletin today. Anyway, if you've watched to the end of this program, thank you very much. Um, remember, I will be posting links to the IndyCar donation site on a fairly regular basis. I still need uh, your donations to help me make ends meet. I will be losing a lot of income from leaving Facebook. I got my last paycheck from Facebook yesterday, uh, and for... The fans online, the fans of the show who are regular subscribers, both on uh, mobile devices and on fixed PCs, I get the princely sum of $47 a quarter, right? So it's about 30 quid. So it's not a great deal of money, but that's going. So I will still need your donations, and I'll post the links. Anyway, that's it from this recorded edition of IndyCar. I hope you've got a nice, clear sound today with no glitching. I look forward to talking to you later on in the week. In the meantime, keep the faith, and remember, independence is coming, but it's only going to come if we, the people who are sovereign, make it happen. I'll see you soon. Bye-bye for now.